Welcome to the instructional video for this Burstner Harmony Line Lazeo TD 594. I'm going to walk you around the outside of the vehicle, then we'll walk and do the inside next. So starting with the outside, it's Fiat base, so mirrors fold in manually. They electrically operate from inside. You've got the entrance to the cab door. Small locker area, so on the Burstners you've got one key that opens all these lockers. Lift it up, you've got a door retaining point there. Gives you access to the under storage area just in that compartment it's quite a deep storage compartment there to close it just firmly shut it and then you can lock it with a click just there we've got an opening window the awning which will send you a separate video of how to use the awnings uh, we've got the larger hardtail door with the door retainer the electric step we've got an external uh, mains 12 volt and aerial socket there and we've got a barbecue point just there above that we've got the mains inlet so this is clearly marked just in there and then next to that we've got the trim event so just be careful on here as it clearly says it does get hot so please be careful that you don't put anything on hang anything on there behind that we've got the entrance to the big locker at the back and we here you'll find your awning pull You'll also find some carpets and you'll also find in this particular one that you've got your ladders just hanging there. You'll probably move these inside the vehicle uh, once you get it all kitted out. The drain for this area is just here. So just unplug that if anything's wet and, it's, and you need it to uh, get the water out, just take that plug out there. We've got the toilet which simply just lifts up, slides out. You do get a little cap that's removable there. And you've got the circular flush button that allows the ventilation of the toilet and it to expel whatever's in there in a quicker manner. So you can only pull that out if the blade valve is in the correct position. And on the underneath of it, you've got a handle and you've got wheels. When you've cleaned it, <coughs> put it back in and just make sure it clips just over there. And that will store away nice and easily in there. In here, you've got a couple of valves. So your yellow one, in the horizontal position like it is, will drain the water out of the, out of the system. You've got to have it down, just like that. That will stop it. So horizontal will stop it, and vertical will drain it. So to drain it, flick it up, and that will empty any water out of the system. The other thing you've got is this little valve before here. This is your frost protection valve. And there's two parts to it. The first part is the diamond. Now you've got to click it across. And then what you must do is flick the little button at the bottom in. And if it stays in just like that, then that will allow the boiler to fill up with water. If it doesn't, if the round circle doesn't stay in, then you'll have to get your heating running for a little bit before you can then press that running. And the reason we say that is it's heated into this area here through the pipe and it will stop it in. So as we look at it again, down with the yellow button, the diamond across and the button pressed in at the bottom here will allow you to fill the water up in the vehicle. There's also one more that you must do for your fresh water, but I'll come round to the other side. If they're in that position, your water will fill up nice and easily. To empty it, turn your diamond and it will automatically just open up the little circle at the bottom and then lift up the little yellow rocker valve there. Should you forget to do any of them, they will simply just come out underneath the vehicle. So if you forget, they'll just drop and you'll remember it quite quickly and go, actually it's them valves inside that panel, just put them in the right position and then you'll be okay. We've also got on here some shelves that fold down and they just hold back with a little turnbuckle. So you've got two there for the two different areas. So that's the rear locker area. Moving around the back, we've got the camera. So your camera's now mounted high up there. And then onto this side, this particular model has got the external shower point. So this is located just in here. You do get the shower hose with it. Gas bottles will be located in here. So this is where you will put your gas bottles or refillable systems, whichever you decide to do. So if again, if we just open those, simply press the button in at the bottom. Press it in at the top. Uh, 
and that will open up. So it will come with a gas regulator. It will also come with a pigtail. And in the black box, you will normally find your towing eye, uh, a jack, which supplied from Fiat. We've got two points for the gas, so two six kilograms will fit in nicely. You can get up to two at 11 kilograms in this area as well. And please leave these free of any obstructions for the gas to expel out of that area. In the next locker, again using the same key. So you just pop that in, turn it, press the button, and then press the button. This is where you will find your fresh water tank. So in here we've got the tank filler. So unscrew that, you've got a little black cap that sits on there and will allow you to put the hose pipe into the water. The little black valve at the side is your drain for your fresh water. And here you'll see that it says 20 litres and 120 litres. To empty it, you turn that little wheel anti-clockwise. To fill it up, you'll need to turn it clockwise until you hear the first one. Anti-clockwise until you empty it. Yeah, And there's two clicks that you'll hear. First click will take you up to 20 litres and then when it is finger tight, only finger tight in it, that will be fully up and it will stop any water from getting out the tank. If you forget this when you're putting your water in through the blue cap, it will simply come out underneath the vehicle as well. Lastly, we've got your wastewater. Nice little sticker here, telling you that it's the wastewater. You've got a handle here, which you'll put on your tool that is supplied, and the wastewater will come out of the grey pipe. So that is your wastewater, and that is found on the passenger side underneath the vehicle. Further forward, we've got the diesel point. So we've got your diesel at the top and your add blue below. This is where you put that in there. Into the cab area, or just to tell, show you what it looks like, this little tool here is your waste water tool. And that simply just fits onto there and turns quarter turn. Yeah, so that's the tool that you're looking for for the wastewater. Vehicle also comes with a tire inflation kit. That's generally visible in the vehicle. Bonnet release catch can be found just here. The engine battery is located underneath the panel here. And underneath the passenger seat is where you will find your main fuses, e-box, and all the electrical items that you will need. That is found underneath the passenger seat. Yeah. The windows themselves come complete with the Remis cab lines, both on the side and on the front. So nice and gently with those, and then away you go. To get access to the bonnet, so underneath or above the Burstner sign, you'll find there's a little yellow lever. This will give us access to the negative point. Positive point is just underneath the cap, which I've just removed to show you, which is here, if you ever need to get to it. But remember, the battery is located underneath the floor. Oil and screen wash to the left-hand side. When you finish, just gently close it, and that will close off that area for you. So that is the outside. Let's move on inside. So to gain access inside, your central locking will do all the doors. We've also got a bin here, just there. We've got some storage pockets, home light charging sections just there, and we've got a blind on the door just there. The step is here, so just press the button and the step will come in and out. We've also got a couple of welcome lights. So that one's your welcome light. And these two here are the awning light just there. So inside the vehicle, the first thing that we'll need to do is come to the main control panel, and this can be found here. You can see there's a symbol to say that we're plugged into electric. To get the power working inside the vehicle, you press this button here. And that will turn on some of the other lights around the vehicle. The other lights that you've not turned on may just need turning on with the switches here. And again, with the lights, there's multiple sockets. There's some sockets at the front. There's some in the middle. These little lights will turn on and off. But then you can also remove them. Move them around and then slide them back on. The ones underneath, you just turn off by pressing up and pressing down. Yeah. So they're the ones for that. Back to the control panel though, we've got a power 
button that tells us what's in the leisure battery. We've got a button at the bottom that tells us what's in the engine battery. We've got a button at the top right that tells us what's in the fresh water tank and this will go up when water's in there. Button at the bottom that will tell us what's in the waste tank. And then a pump on and pump off for pumping water for your taps and for your toilet area. Now to prime the system first of all, you'll need to turn your pump on. Come to your taps and all the taps are clearly marked on the top with hot or cold. Turn the tap to hot. Lift the tap up and you, what you'll do is you'll pull water from your fresh water tank through the boiler into the uh, into the boiler and then out of there through into the water system. Do that both on the tap here. The one at the front is marked, in the, in the bathroom is marked clearly on the front and then you've also got one just clearly marked on the front of the shower. Pull it through on all three taps. Once you've got a steady stream then you'll turn your water off. And that will allow you then to just have the boiler full of water ready for you to get your hot water heating done. So the heating and the hot water can be found on the screen at the side here. Again, we've got an element to say that we're plugged into mains. If you're not using mains and you're using gas, then make sure you turn your gas on first. And you'll generally do that as well as coordinating that you've turned that unit off. To turn the unit on, you press the middle button. That will then start up the unit and allow you to choose the options that you want. So first option is the flashing option. So whatever you want, flashes. If you turn it along, it will flash to the next one. So what I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to get it warm in the vehicle. So we'll turn it up to the desired temperature and then we'll select it there. If we're up to temperature, it'll stay that. If it needs to get up to temperature, it'll start flashing. The next option I always do is go straight to the power. And I want to make sure in this scenario, because I've not got any gas in the vehicle for demonstration, that I'm choosing electric. The reason I do that is if I left it on gas, it would lock out and I'm having to reset it to show you and demonstrate it, but also in the practical world. So you can see now that it's flashing. So it's telling us on the temperature that it's not up to 17 degrees. It will keep flashing until it gets up to 17 degrees then it will turn off. The thermostat for the heating is a little button above. From there then, what you want to do if you've got water in, you'll turn it to the little symbol with the thermostat in the water. You'll turn it to eco, which is approximately 40 degrees. High, which is approximately six, hot, which is approximately 60 degrees. Or boost, which will get you up to 60 degrees at the quickest possible time but taking the power away from the hot water, uh, from the heating to purely heat the hot water, and that's on boost. So if you want to do the heating and the hot water at equal times to get it up, you want to set that on hot and then your fan on high. But for this purpose, I'm not going to get the water heater working because I haven't got water in the vehicle. The fuel source then. We want to select either EL2, which is 2 kilowatt electric. And again, you'll see it change above the line. EL1, which is 1 kilowatt electric. Mix 2, which is gas and 2 kilowatt. Mix 1, which is gas and 1 kilowatt and gas only. The mix 2 function will get you up to temperature as long as you've got mains electric plugged in and gas up to temperature at the quickest possible time. So that is your quickest and most effective option to get you up to temperature or your water heating up there. So for this, I'm just going to put EL1. The next option along is our fan speed. So eco being slow. Then we've got high. And if we press and run high for a few minutes and the fan kicks in, then what we will also have then is the boost function which comes available. And that just like it did before, will take the power away from the hot water heating to get the vehicle up to temperature as quick as possible. They're the fundamentals. We've also then got timers, the clock second settings, and the uh, settings options in there. Get the fundamentals in your head first. You do have the handbooks. There's plenty online. You've got manuals and, and videos to show you any more in depth. But if you get the four basics first, 
set in your mind, then you can explore the other functions. The only other thing to do is before you leave site, turn off your gas and your electric, but do that after you've turned off this unit. So press and hold it and it will kindly tell you that it is off. Do that first before you unplug and you turn off your gas and you'll save yourself from any of the unwanted uh, flashing warning signs that comes up to tell you that there's no power to it. So that's the heating system, the main control panel gone through there. Below you've got your TV bracket. To move it, you pull that down and that will then allow the bracket to move around. Lock it back in place for travel. You've got main sockets, 12 volt sockets and aerials. And you've got a USB charging point, a dual one just there. Little storage cupboard here, you press the button. Little storage cupboard just for you there. To the side we've got the fridge. So to turn the fridge on, you press and hold it and then it will nice and easily light up. To go through your options, you've got a mode button. So if you press that, it will navigate you through the options. So the battery will only work when the engine is running. So just remember that battery only works when the engine's running. Gas, obviously it will only work when the gas is running. And again, it's saying we've got a warning because we've got no gas in. Mains, manual electric. So when you're plugged into mains, this will work. Yeah, and that's mains only. Or you've got automatic. Now, for those with a keen eye there, you'll have seen the automatic function automatically went to electric because we are plugged into mains electric now. Yeah. To turn the temperature down, press the temperature from minimum to maximum. To open it, you've got your little slide buttons and this will illuminate and open up this area for you. Yeah, you've got your little cooler just in there and then your fridge lower down. To turn the unit off, just press and hold the button and the light will go out and the panel will go dim. Okay, above that, we've got a storage area. Into the rear, pressing the buttons, we've got storage, hanging rails, little lights, cushions and headrests that come with it. So they're part of the ambient packs. If you're not ordering the ambient pack, they won't come with those. More storage, ladders and carpets that we saw from the inside there. Again, make sure you press these in before you're on with travels. In here, we've got storage compartments we've got an opening roof light in here we pull that down pull the handle together and lift it up either to the front or the back or both together and then just kindly slide that back in just in there clips in place in the shower we've got a toilet rail that slides down that hangs we've got an adjustable shower hose we've got two plug sockets both at the back and the front we've got a, a turnbuckle for the shower door so that just goes across in there and magnetises in, just like, like so. So we've got a large showering area just there. For transit, just make sure that you do lock that back in place, just like so. We've got a pin that we just release for the tamber door at the back. So for those of you that are wanting to shower, we've got... That dividing door off again with this in transit just put the clip back on it will stop the banging around of that door in that area we've got storage underneath toilet roll holder just in there the toilet will slide around move around give you more space we've got the flush button which is the blue button just here so that will come only when the pump is turned on. So make sure you turn the pump on for this. And we've got an indicator to tell you that the toilet is full. The toilet itself has a valve inside and this valve must be in the right position for you to pull the toilet cassette out. The valve can be found just here. So slide it to the back of the vehicle and it will open the valve. Slide it to the front of the vehicle and it will close it. Yeah, so... That is open, slide it back and that will close it. It's got to be in the closed position for the toilet to be able to, to the cassette in the toilet to be able to be removed. Down here is where you will find the boiler in the bottom compartment. There's a little bit of storage from the wardrobe there. So that's where you will find the boiler. Into the kitchen area, we've got the oven. 
with the three burner hobs just here again a little polite notice to say don't put it down on naked flame please let it cool down as well and then we've got oven and grill so grill to the right and then you've got an igniter to the left does your oven and if you just wanted to do one of your hobs so you just turn that press it in and that will light that once your gas is on 12 o'clock position is off in all of them and when you're using your grill just leave it ajar you can close it when you're using your oven below that we've got the pack which comes with everything in there pigtails your filler net your manuals the pigtail for the gas the sh shower hose keys for the external lockers are all in there below we've got the drainer cover so now come with the drainer cover you've got beds bedding which is a mattress cover which is part of the ambient pack and in there we've got the feet for the awnings and the keys for the shower point and the uh, barbecue point next to it here we've got the slider compartment so it slides out storage for items again just make sure before you travel off you just lock that in place cupboards just here is where you'll find your isolation valves so you've got your fridge you've got your hot water and you've got your cooker the bed key position so this is where you will operate the bed and it will only work when you turn it so in the up position it won't work and you turn it to the side it will work and drop the bed so we'll come back to that in a minute when we go over the bed underneath here we've got another drawer and again we've got a press button to do that the floor area we've got storage in the floor area so you just lift these up by turning the tab pressing them back in and that locks in place we have a main socket lower down here we've got a main socket located up there we've got a main socket just located there and we've got a main socket in here with the light switch for the bathroom area that's the general amount of switches that you'll find on these bursters blinds and fly screen are all together in the one unit press the button and lift it up and then your windows press press and gently out it will hold it out and then bring it all the way back in to close it up just like so they're the same on all the windows around the vehicle the two windows in the front have the vario blinds just pull the cord and it will lift the blinds up sorry there you go and you can set it at whatever height or level you want same on both sides the table will lock down for those that have ordered a dinette to berth you'll need to then just spin the legs down to give you some support just like that so the legs go on that side table lifts over and then your two infill cushions will go in the middle if you have ordered the dinette to berth option it does not come as standard with it table itself pulls up to get it to come down you've got to lift the table up to go down so hand on either side lift it up and then push it down and it will stay down you'll need it down if you want the bed to come all the way down to the lower position and to move on to the bed to get it all the way down i'll show you in a minute how to do that but first of all we've got a new configuration in this front area where the passenger seats go so you'll remove the middle cushion you'll then expose a center area which just has some hook on points you'll need to lift them off and you'll see on the panel that it's got the hooks on either side of the seating you'll see that it's got the hooks for it to go into and then you've got a little middle section here which will lift up and acts as your little table area for those traveling passengers so rear facing and the forward facing seats are all on the same side of the vehicle now 
To remove the seats, all you simply need to do is loosen the ties here and then pull that back and it will lift the seat out of the area just like so. And then you can see that a bit easier. This is the section that you'll need to remove, it just hooks into the little sections for it just there. Underneath this seat you do have a bit of storage so you can utilise that if you need to. Please note as well that the seats do come with headrests so you can remove them and fit them in for your people that are travelling. When you're putting it back together the three cushions go down, there's some little infill pads here which just go in place to hide and, t and nicen up the seat belt areas and make that bench seat nice and neat. Now when you're wanting to put the bed fully down you'll need to remove both sets of backrests. Come into this cupboard, make sure the button's right and then just keep pressing the button and then this will lower the bed. Either to the higher position or all the way down to that lower level. Just like so. Yeah. Now one additional option for this year is the slide out, which I'll come round to the other side and I will show you. Now this modification will allow you, first of all, the standard way to sleep across it, which is transverse. Or now alternatively, by sliding out the bottom section, it will allow you to sleep longitudinal in the vehicle. So that's how you do it. Or to, to revert it back, you simply remove the section here, which basically reveals a section here, which will just slide back in, like so. And then go back up. using the key function. Now one thing you will find is if you don't slide that panel right in, the bed will not work. You've got to have it all the way in and then the bed will go up and out of the way. So just a little note. The lights above, just press on and off like the lights below. You've got your own roof vent here, which is a hecky. Simply pull it down and open it up, and a couple of light switches accessible when that's up. Taking it up, take it up nice and easily. Again, when you get to about that height, this is the height that we tell you to drop it down when you're not using it. Let the vehicle ventilate in the winter months, or even in the summer months. And then when you're ready to use it, just pop it back up again, just like so. It will hit a limit switch at the top and we'll stop. Above, you've got a double USB point, charging point just there as well. Seat wise, once you put your cushions back, you're back into that living area nice and easily. The seats themselves on the cab will lift up and down using the little buttons here and we'll change the headrest position just there. The lever bar below will slide it forward and backwards. On here, we've got the multifunctional steering wheel, we've got the electric handbrake, the new digital dash, this is a nine speed gearbox, and we've got the new multimedia system just playing, just there. You've got hill descent, traction plus, lock button, mute button, and your air conditioning unit. USB point there and a jack point there, passenger air pack just there, and we've got the drawer and storage area just as you would normally have. Lights to the left and full beam back. And we've got drip counter on the uh, electric wind, uh, sorry, windscreen wipers just on the end of here. Yeah. To light it up, because we're on the new digital dash, keys in. You'll see the dash lights up nice and bright. Now, gives you all your different options, your settings are all on there. And then we've got the home system here, with your multimedia system. You've got your phone connection, your app connection. 
you've got a reversing camera option so it comes up nice and clear and then on the cab itself we've got the remis cab lines go again go around the mirror the same for the other side and we'll lock in place so that that concludes the instructional video for the Burstner 594 Lazeo. On leaving the vehicle, the only thing you need to do is just turn that off. That will turn everything off. And then turn off your individual lights if you need to do that. One thing I just remembered to do before we go is the main RCD breaker can be found just in here. And this is where you will find all your switches like you do at home. Just lift that up. You've got all your breaker points just here. You've got a little test button. If you click that down, it should flip down when you're hooked up to mains. That's the test point that will ask you to check if you don't think you've got electric coming into the vehicle. But if everything's up like that, you should be in a full working order. And remember, your fuses are all in the front of the vehicle. So I hope you find our new video useful. Please like and subscribe to our YouTube channel. Please leave your feedbacks and comments. Most importantly, we hope you enjoy your new motorhome. Thanks for watching.